head. I would not be too surprised here by the community vote. We'll bring it up and see which team's going to win, Michael. You got any predictions here? Oh, I think FaZe is going to win the community vote. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to win the oh 85%. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Not surprising in the least. So, standard fare here for the community vote. Uh, FaZe, one of the most popular and best teams in Latin America. They haven't been having a good season so far. They're definitely struggling. But it's early days. A uh, wonderful podcast, actually, that is being created by Jump, who hosted the U.S. Nationals, had a variety of guests on just a couple days ago. And we were all asked, uh, we were all asked about uh, what teams do we think would make it to the finals for the Invitational. And I said I wouldn't be too surprised. Now, obviously, I don't usually do predictions, but I said I wouldn't be too surprised if at the end of the Invitational Finals, the Grand Finals for the World Championships, whether it would be G2 and FaZe squaring off. Again, similar to what we saw in Rio. I think FaZe have improved as a team, despite the fact that they've had a bit of a rocky start here in Latin America. They uh, obviously didn't have the best results, but yesterday yeah. in particular, I would have really liked to have seen yesterday. It's an unfortunate that the environment around FaZe didn't allow them to play, because I actually would have loved to have seen that matchup go the full distance. Yeah. Really get a good assessment on both of these teams. Now, I'm not 100% on this, but I believe FaZe currently is in uh, a particular region of uh, uh, Brazil that is currently raining again. Right. And that was the reason why we had FaZe disconnect in the middle of the match uh, when they were playing against uh, Liquid several times. There was times. terrible thunderstorms, from what I understand. And yeah. And like almost a tropical downpour. And it is, I, I think, still raining there. So... Okay. That could potentially be uh, an issue. We're going to have to hope that it isn't today. Yeah, I mean, it, it always sucks for teams when Rehost ends up coming into this and when weather comes into this and it ends up derailing your momentum or derailing even your ability to have a match in FaZe's case because their building kept losing power yesterday, which was the bigger issue is that yeah. you're, you're in a building. It's not like you can just go down to your own breaker and flip the switch or have even have backup generator for these players. It's, yeah. it's a circumstance where there's really not that much you can do. For Liquid, in terms of the standings, that was really big, though, because Liquid was able to pick up three points. Let's look back to last season in Latin America. After Bootcamp Gaming competed in Montreal for DreamHack Montreal to try and grab one of those spots that were up for grabs for the Invitational this year that ended up going to Cloud9, Bootcamp weren't able to get back to Brazil in time for their match against Liquid. Liquid very graciously accepted a rescheduling and lost that matchup. If Liquid had have just made Bootcamp forfeit, and in some ways, a lot of people said played by the rules because they could have forced a forfeit if they really wanted It would have been within the rules if they had taken the win. If they had taken the win, which was within the rules and was possible for Liquid, Liquid's three points from that matchup would have sent them to Rio instead of Immortals. Mm -hmm. So need I remind everybody here how important it is to rack up as many points early on in the season as you can. You can look at you can look at North America as well. Mouse is going to be a story that I think people talk about for quite a while. They're now known as Rise Nation. Worst record through the first seven games of NA. Second best record through the second half and fell just short of the playoffs in Rio and probably would have made it if they had a one one extra match in that first half. So for FaZe, that was obviously a disappointing result in this match against Red Devils. We hope is able to go the, uh, the full distance. We're actually just going to load into bank for your pleasure. So, Bank, a good map, I think, for this match to take place. And FaZe Clan, coming off of their forfeit loss yesterday, are looking to get as many points as possible, as you just discussed a few seconds prior. Red Devils will be starting on defense, thus they will ban the first operator of this match. Who's it going to be? We've seen a lot of Habana bans on Bank, so it makes the basement quite a lot easier to defend. The question is, will it be FaZe or will it be Red Devils? Or are we going to have an odd... Nope, there it is. Okay. The question is answered before I can even finish it. Red Devils take out Habana. Sensible ban here on this map. That means the basement is going to be, again, much easier to defend. Also, just in general, I mean, she's a great operator for attacking all of the sites here. If you really think about it, um, there's a lot of site uh, walls where you want to open up on tellers. It, Habana's great for, better than Thermite in some cases. Uh, same thing on the top floor defense, just in general, an excellent operator on this map. I think this might actually be a bit of a mistake from Red Devils here. If you track FaZe's bans over the last four months, their bans are pretty consistently Hibana Echo. Almost every single time, yep. FaZe completely eliminates the Red Crow content that was added to this game. But now they ban Echo, and that opened up FaZe to have basically a free ban, which they'll use on Ying. Yeah, I mean, the Yingman definitely going to be, I mean, very useful for both teams, to be honest. Um, 
having Ying Dot in play is going to make the attack a little bit more difficult depending on where you're going to be attacking. That's really interesting to me though. Um, the Echo Ban is standard fare, right? Because Echo and Maestro, they always get banned. Smoke getting banned out is going to make defending the basement that much harder. So while you've got Habana not in play, which makes it easier, you don't have the gas canisters to juggle. And the gas canisters from Smoke are the single most useful piece of utility on the typical meta play downstairs. They can most efficiently juggle your opponents as a defensive team. This is extraordinarily perplexing. So number one, FaZe have had Smoke banned against them before. Mocket banned Smoke in Rio against phase on Oregon, mm -hmm. which prompted Moringa, who is the typical smoke player, to start playing Jaeger, and Moringa racked up the kills, playing on a more Jack fragging, hyper-aggressive style role than he's used to with smoke, showing his versatility as a player. But that was also done by Mocket. When Mocket knew phase defended first, Red Devils just eliminated smoke when Red Devils needs to defend first. And you know that there is almost always going to be a shield or some kind of crazy Finca play coming out from FaZe on Bank. Both of those operators hard countered by Smoke. That is Bomb extremely puzzling. Unless Red Devils has something up their sleeve to try and make it through these six rounds, I'm very Ten confused. You know the thing that's even more puzzling to me, Parker, is the logic behind the bans, just on a base Five level. I mean, banning. you're banning Habana, why? Because you want to make the basement easier to defend. Attackers You're banning smoke. Why? Because you want to make the basement harder to defend. To they're contradicting themselves in their own bands. And I understand that they're trying to counter phase directly in some way, but as you touched on, they're not doing that if you look at phase's track record. So, this is a little bit confusing for Red Devils, that's for sure. Uh, hopefully for them and their fans, it's not going to be too detrimental. Yeah. So, phase have brought the Thermite Maverick combo, which is so very common on bank in lieu of the Habana, because you're going to be able to open up just the drops that you need, and then also the site wall. They've also brought the Montane, who is going to be very useful when going for the plant if you're playing full meta and you come in from server. There's a reinforcement on the server drop down, which means Red Devils are likely going to be trying to play in server and defending it hard. And uh, the reason you would also do that is because no Habana means not all those dropdowns get opened. And if you waste the hard destruction on a server drop, then you can't open up another one of those more important ones, which is uh, something that Red Devils is banking on with that server hold. Assuming they are holding server, we haven't seen server yet. We'll find out. Attackers have located a bomb. Astro on the uh, or Astro on the Twitch is always a beautiful thing to behold, a role that he has been able to rack up an immense amount of kills with on the past, back when Gohan used to be on this roster. Of course, we'll be seeing Gohan in the final matchup of the day in the Ints Liquid match. Astro just being able to keep that small drone alive, and we got to witness the way that FaZe played on bank just not too long ago with Cameraman's efficient use of this hatch upstairs inside of the admin office. Always good usage overall, showing that you can do so in only two charges. Excellent use of the Maverick to make up for the fact, Michael, that there's no Hibana available. It will necessitate almost always having a Maverick with your Thermite in this case. Astro playing on the main stairs. He's going to be pushing down with his teammates when it's necessary, but before then, he can get some of the utility using his Twitch drone. It's going to be both Twitch drones now used up it seems from Astro, and he's done his job, and now it's going to fall to him being the excellent fragger that he truly is. C4 from VNX will miss, and that is really not what you want to see, especially considering there is no smoke in play, but still a lot of damage being done to phases, planters, and the plant cover in the Montane. The wall also has not been opened up. They've decided to open up the east one instead of the north one, which is a bit of an oddity. Leans again heavy on the Montane pick, so the default for phase has shifted. We've got three C4s available to greet the push from FaZe as a plant behind Yuna will go down, and that will eliminate Moringa. There wasn't that much left after the Thermite had been reset. Mm -hmm. There should still be one more C4 available as well. You've got the Mirror and the Valk and the Pulse there as FaZe tries to drop into the site, but Red Devil's countering this perfectly. That's three kills on their behalf, though hatch cover will be Astro there to drop in, but the rest of Red Devils will cover. And knowing that there's only one lone member of FaZe Clan remaining, Devils, the Red Devils are able to reassess the situation and get the correct amount of bodies in the right lanes and right avenues, and FaZe will lose their very first attack, and a good hold from Red Devils, all things considered, showing the power of those C4s and how well-timed they could be. And that's how they compensated for the lack of the smoke. So good job to them. 
being able to use the C4 as well. And the Evil Eyes on top of that, just all in all, a generally well defended basement, despite not having the smoke. So it's good. I mean, you know, even if you're going to contradict yourself with the logic of the bands, in a way, they're practicing based on that logic. So they're prepared for that. I mean, it's sure good defense from Red Devils. This is interesting. They're going to six pick into a cap can. It's something you don't see every day instead of an Ella, which is also something you don't see every day. Remember those six months where Ella was the best defensive operator? Sorry, you just said Ella, and my eyes blacked out with rage. Yeah. That was the. I have no idea what you're talking about. That was a terrible time in Siege history. But it's gone now. We're past that. Now, I wouldn't call it terrible. I would say that she was definitely oppressive to play against and, and checked a lot of boxes and was essentially a super soldier. Okay, let's say bad. Let's just leave it at that. It was a bad okay. time. I, I understand you. Yeah. I do remember it, though. I know I know what you're saying. Yeah, so Mitty playing on the Cap Can, or Mighty. As uh, he will be putting down those entry denial devices instead of using the Kuzmats. And uh, this is Attackers definitely the sort of operator you're going to pick into because you can catch your opponent off guard if you're not detected in the prep phase. So there's a couple things that I wanted to touch on here. The last time that we saw FaZe on bank was actually two play days ago, which was in LATAM play day number two, in which FaZe deftly handled Pain by a score of seven to three. And the bans from FaZe were Hibana and Echo, Pain took Valkyrie, as well as Monty away. There's no Monty ban here. We know that FaZe is gonna run Monty an awful lot. So Red Devils did one of two things. Either one, they deliberately banned the Hibana because they were more worried about it and they had a suitable way of dealing with anything else. Or number two, they have specifically engineered compositions to be able to take out a Monte. Now, with the way that Red Devils is going to be defending this open area, I would imagine that they're probably going to try to stop Montaigne as he pushes in as much as possible. That will come in handy with the Captain and the Mirror Windows, as well as the Goo Mines from Velvet. We just saw that one of the black mirrors that were inside of the staff break room, looking in towards open area, was taken out by Astro's Twitch Drone. That will force the members of Red Devils to play a little bit more cautiously and not as securely in staff area and open up a two-way window through the double doors in towards open area that FaZe can use. The attackers bomb the it's definitely a good job from Astro to give his team that advantage early on. FaZe looking to execute onto Kitchen, it seems. They've got good control by Skylight, but it's a dangerous push, especially considering you have the Bandit batteries still attackers in play. Drop the Twitch, drop the very diffuser. unlikely to be able to get those Bandit batteries, means you're going to have to find another solution. Montaigne's still a factor, and can easily put down those smokes. Maybe go for the drop. It's very dangerous to drop as a shield, even as a Montaigne. It's likely he's going to push down through the stairs at a later time. These are a little bit too cautious, I have to say, right now. They've taken their vertical control. You're not allowed, you aren't, aren't able to really do much with it on this site, to be honest. You've got the drop downs for access to the open area site, but using those drop downs, you cannot influence Kitchen directly. And at least it's very difficult, and it doesn't usually come into being. The mirror window being open is going to be, again, such a huge factor here for FaZe. Interesting that they've prepped the Montane to drop through the hatch rather than just walk through one of the doorways that are open. I assume that there's going to be a smoke drop strat, and then hopefully Montaigne will be able to extend fast enough. But once again, Red Devils could even have four C4s on the board here with the Bandit and the Cap get in play. And there you go, one Nitro Cell from VNX will go out. Vice um, is there to jump in and take out Yuna. So Shield is down, Mav is there, but Moringa also has the cross, and two members from FaZe will put points on the board. Astro making sure that nobody can wander out from staff areas. We see one member of the team, Red Devils, waiting. It's going to be Velvet on the flank to take out Mav, and a great play from Abru, who was holding the angle that we thought the Twitch was at. VNX is there, and with the shotgun, Abru will push in. They'll start to defuse, but Cameraman is far removed, lighting it up, but the diffuser is vulnerable right now, and FaZe will have to hurry to try and stop it. And there you go. Even with the kill on the cameraman, Red Devils taking the seven seconds. Great coverage from VNX to be able to get that diffuser disable down. And that's two rounds in a row from Red Devils. Completely beating FaZe Clan every step of the way. Yeah, this is not what anyone I think expected to see. FaZe definitely the favored team in this matchup. Red Devils, though, playing better. FaZe, uh... Hmm. They had an interesting round. Uh, a big part of that, I think, is they were a little too slow on the uptick and uh, on their eventual take into the site. They didn't have adequate cover. There was nobody holding from the main hallway, which would have been a great line of sight to stop the Mira from pushing. Also would have been able to deny the bandit of VNX from coming up from main stairs if he had shifted his position. I don't know if it was deliberate for VNX to fall downstairs or if it was a mistake. Honestly, it looked like a mistake when it happened. 
but uh, it ended up working out pretty great for Red Devils. Uh, overall, phase a little disjointed right now. It seems as though they don't have a full cover on whatever strat they're trying to pull out each of these rounds. Also, they're using very basic strategies. Uh, so one thing that I want to touch back on is the, the attack onto the bottom floor. They decided to open up the wall that faces towards the server stacks instead of the one that faces towards the server stairs, which is abnormal. And it, it makes sense because you're bringing them on tank. It does. I mean, I, I understand this, the idea behind the strategy. It also allowed them to uh, avoid the evil eyes that would have denied default spot. But it was just a, a little bit of an odd strategy considering they hadn't had any picks or control or anything like that. There were no drop downs opened up. I mean, it felt like they were just trying to force a plant. In that round, it was the same exact thing. That's the point I'm trying to make, is that they aren't really engaging Red Devils. They're instead playing around the objective, but they don't have adequate control ever to play around the objective exclusively. So it's just just a bit odd from FaZe Clan. You don't usually see them play like this, and I feel like maybe there's something uh, distracting them right now in their play. Or the strat calls are just bad. I mean, even prior to the disconnects yesterday, it did appear that FaZe was getting beaten by Liquid on a number of those rounds, right? Oh, pretty handily. And Liquid did look like they were more well organized, so I don't know if it's just FaZe maybe tinkering with some things and trying to get everything down and maybe realizing that they can make a recovery later in the season, but as we've, we've noted many times, that's a, that's a pretty big gamble to make. So, as we shift in towards round number three now, Red Devils holds a 2-0 lead and are doing an exquisite job on defense to be able to hold off FaZe. FaZe also just lost on open area, which is a site that has a very low pick rate in comparison to the others, especially over yeah. the last season and a half. So, it could have been that maybe FaZe just wasn't prepared for it. But no excuses here, as FaZe is a very good team on bank and should be able to thrive no matter what gets tossed at them. Presence inside of the main lobby with three members of FaZe looking to ascend those spiral stairs up the red velvet carpet towards the top of what is referred to as Banana. A flash will sail over the right shoulder of Yuna over towards the elevators, and well, with the Maestro being spotted, Yuna will continue to ping away. This is really poor information management from FaZe. Nobody is droning in this situation for the Montaigne. They're just relying on winning engagements, and they're getting beaten back time after time. Vitz able to take down Cameraman thanks to the Goo Mine giving away his position. But he has taken some damage. He's going to fall back, but he's still alive, still in play for Red Devils. And uh, Vitz just going to start on his flank to the main lobby, and I hasten to guess that he might actually be able to simply come up behind these attackers who are not watching their flank as of this moment. Astro will trade with Abru, so it's an even one-to-one -one on both of those players. You see Vitz coming from the main lobby, but there we go. FaZe have fallen back just ever so slightly and are now watching their flank using Mav. This is fantastic. It's going to force Vitz back, but he's not going to take any damage in that retreat. Over by the banana windows, that's going to be Moringa up there, and I think you said it correctly. Very poor information gathering from FaZe to be able to deal with that, and there's not a lot of disruption either from FaZe. A lot of the strategy that we've seen from them, including uh, the last time we saw them play against Pain, was FaZe getting Mav on the windows. As the Blackbeard, he's very powerful in that position. Moringa picking up two big kills, looking to burst the site wide open. Velvet very low on HP with VNX not too far off. Both sequestered over by the conference room. And looking at the long table, they will both try to rotate in. Yuna getting the plant down. Shield on his back. Moringa picks up yet another kill as Yuna gets felled by VNX. Oh, no! And that's the diffuser. Nobody from FaZe can cover. And an oh, no, Michael, is absolutely correct. Yuna with zero coverage, solo planting with two members of FaZe looking on in dismay and horror as that round goes the way of their opponents. Red Devils will put a third on the board phase in dire straits at the moment. I mean, all things considered, I, I I was expecting to have to say Moringa was the hero of that round because FaZe had lost the round several times over there and Moringa started the frags back in his team's favor. But that C4 right at the end from VNX, that's all it took. Red Devils doing an, a stellar job of denying the, uh, the objective play here from FaZe, which again, Clearly the focus from FaZe is simply getting the diffuser planted. Attackers the problem every single one hands. of these rounds is that FaZe are, yes, going for the diffuser plant, fantastic, but they never have adequate control to facilitate said plant. So every round they're countered. They're beaten back by Red Devils who are seeing through what FaZe is trying to pull out and just denying 
the plant. The one round they didn't deny the plant. They relied on getting the refrags and the retake. That was the open area. And it worked out great for Red Devils. So FaZe Clan needs to mix up their strategy quite a lot here. Uh, and just in general, the way that they're playing. Because it's not just their objective focus play without adequate control. It's also their poor information gathering that we've seen from them every single round. I mean, in that last round, they were pushing into main lobby. The reason you push main lobby, whether it be on tellers or CEO, is because it is the easiest attack strategy. Because you don't have to worry too much about your flanks. It's, yeah, you do have a flank, technically speaking, to buy tellers, but that could be watched. And it was watched by FaZe. And all you need to do is a very linear, linear push into the site. But they didn't drone ahead of themselves. So they lost two players on that linear push. And that's why they couldn't establish adequate control. Just, again, confusing plays by FaZe. Yeah. And this isn't even a map type of deal. No. Bank is statistically no. a very good map for both attackers and defenders. It holds the title of the most balanced map. So you can't even point to the fact that, oh, it's just Villa. Of course they're winning defense. Oh, it's just Clubhouse. Of course they're winning defense. You also can't say FaZe is bad at this map. I mean, this is Bank, one of FaZe's best historically, if you look far enough back. Unless they've just been getting worse at it. And that's it the thing, possible. too, is that there's, there's a chance that they're getting countered quite a bit, and either teams aren't playing them on it, or maybe they're just losing their luster on this map in particular. It does happen. And they can get better at others. That's okay. There is an ebb and flow to, uh, to map pools for some of these teams. Mm -hmm. And this just could be what we're seeing. Well... Whatever the case be, we're back to the basement here for Red Devils, a site that they were very successful on the last time they attempted to defend it, all thanks to their good utility management, despite not having the smoke in play. You're going to see Velvet doing his best to deny access to the hallway drop down. He's not going to be successful in all likelihood here. The way that FaZe, uh, or Cameraman specifically, is opening up that uh, drop, it, he cannot directly be countered. He's being very safe and cautious about this, rightfully so. Yeah. So below Red Velvet, understanding that that hatch control is important and Maverick not popping it. Always interesting to see a Maverick on a team with an operator like Mav. So excuse me if we trip over our words at some point. Mm -hmm. First grenade is going to get tossed in. No ADS on the board for Red Devils as Jaeger was not picked amongst their lineup. He's not banned this time. North America has actually been banning him a fair bit, yeah. including Space Station. So Latin America not really banning Jaeger all that much. Abreu missing the C4 is second time. That happens from time to time. He'll get flashed inside a red. Three members of four members of Red Devils all with inside a red as one will move out and scramble, heading for the hills. This C4 juggle is going to be very important. We saw it be quite accessible last time and quite successful. Mighty kicks one down and Avery will grab the other. That's the shield off the board and FaZe will try the same thing. A refuse to adapt from FaZe here could be an especially large problem. But despite that, not enough C4s are tossed out with information not being in favor of Red Devils. The plant goes down successfully for FaZe and they will scramble into the post plant. Three members of FaZe versus four members of Red Devils will give Red Devils a fighting chance, but you're going to need to send somebody from RDS up to try and take care of those hatches, especially inside of open area. There's going to be Super Astro. Great name and handle for him. He's shred through Mighty and then F2 put into good use as down, down goes Vitey. And you'll also see Abru fell. It's just Velvet who's left and, well, doesn't really matter. As it's a great job for Moringa. Guarding that diffuser downstairs and FaZe will finally grab round one in their column on a good post plant. I saw only one C4 get tossed out there in comparison to, what was it, three the last time that yep. we saw lockers get defended down below. There were definitely C4 still in hand for Red Devils. Uh, that's poor information gathering from um, Red Devils to uh, facilitate that, the C4 tosses. They really needed to be able to <laughs> get them down. But uh, I think it more comes down to the fact that FaZe changed their strategy a little bit. Uh, instead of thermiting the wall by server stack, they chose to thermite the one that went towards the server stairs. And they faked out a plant at default spot, but they actually planted the diffuser deep in sight. So even if the other C4s had been tossed, if they weren't pl uh, placed in the correct position, it's likely that FaZe still would have gotten that diffuser down. Defender Their post plant, by there, I mean FaZe, FaZe's post plant was fantastic. Um, just about as good as it could have been. So they earned that round. Good on them. Seeing the problem and uh, making some small changes. However, I feel like they could have maybe adapted a little bit more. Some small changes to uh, to get that round. A win's a win. Now, Red Devils, on the other hand, they're going to stick to this site. And the reason being is I'm sure they 
feel a little bit cheated out of that last round as uh, it just comes down to them, and by them I mean Red Devils, managing their utility pool. And if they're able to use it a little bit better this round, they should be able to get another win in the basement. You still got two cracks at it for Red Devils. And keep in mind that now because they are going back to lockers, it means that open area is once again open and CEO will be open at the conclusion of this round. So if we see a successful defense from Red Devils, then, I mean, you're not going to have to play on this side again as face. I'm surprised that uh, Red Devils haven't gone to tellers yet. I'm not actually really that surprised. I'm more surprised they went to open area, but CEO seems to be trying to take the mantle of Teller's Archives as the second most played site on this bomb site. I think. I mean, sure, but I'm talking about like success. I think Teller's is statistically the best site. If you look at Bank, like I mean, it doesn't get played as much as some right. of the other ones, but it gets it, people win there quite a lot. Yeah, this is just a little bit weird to me. Especially when FaZe doesn't really run an IQ with how often yeah. Valkyrie is played in that lobby site. The, you know, when you're looking at Teller's Archives and being able to control the lobby and likely having all of these different electronics-based operators on defense, it's going to mean that IQ's usefulness skyrockets. I mean, even here on the basement, IQ would be really useful for FaZe. Yes. Uh, it's, it's odd that IQ's not being brought, but you could see the Jackal instead. Uh, this is going to be to try and clear out potential roamers, of which there are none from Red Devils. So... Unnecessary, but better safe than sorry, I suppose, is the uh, mentality from FaZe. Yeah. Bomb located by Drop down's going to get opened up here from FaZe's side cameraman, doing his typical efficient, uh, efficient open there on the drop. And we'll be going for the second one. Doesn't have enough torch to get the second one, from my understanding. Uh, but uh, he will open up quite a lot of holes there that can be used later in the round to distract, if nothing else. Yeah. So this hatch control, once again, will be vital. And there's a bit of a miss there from Cameraman on being able to open it up. And it looks like he's almost all out of breaching fuels. He'll open up a number of sight lines. That hatch was not popped, obviously, last time, which yep. allowed uh, FaZe to be able to just simply sit there and watch it. Not necessarily by design, as Maverick is not able to actually open that whole thing up. Moringa will get the walls downstairs, though. And you see the... Maestro just sitting very patiently Survey. inside of Garage. This is something that Red Devils has actually been doing almost every single round, which is keep my watching a late flank through Garage, as a lot of teams will do. Astro actually has crept through Garage a couple times in previous rounds for FaZe. C4 will go at him for the first time. Nobody from FaZe Clan will go down to that. Yuna off the shield after I think FaZe realized that Gambit was not particularly worthwhile. He'll tag in the Valkyrie. And of course, VNX with a C4 in hand will look to try and grab a kill of his own, and he'll go down and goodbye, Moringa. Zabru from above starts lighting up the players onto the hatch. Velvet there, and oh, Astro with the late flank after Mighty gets distracted, and there you have it. Yuna now in, no shield on his back, with fights picking up a big kill. Astro will be a major player here with Mav now needing to come down to the site as FaZe struggles. Astro picks up his third kill, but he's going to need to grab that diffuser. Very low on HP. One goo mine will stop him. Abru around the door in a 1v2. Mav will grab one kill, but cannot find the Operator second. And once time. again, Red Devils will hold on tightly and persevere. And it has been a very impressive game from them so far, as they will guarantee themselves a victory here on the defense with four of the possible six rounds. You could see there when the Pulse saw that he had the diffuser down, I mean, easy decision-making process, run up those server stairs, stay alive, and deny access to the diffuser. That was a whole game plan as soon as Red Devils was able to win the juggle of the C4s. And that's really what it comes down to. Getting the kills, using those C4s on the players on phase who were attempting to plant inside a server. I have to be honest, if we had seen a little bit of patience on FaZe's side, if Yuna had, instead of trying to plant, simply waited for Astro to tear apart the players in the actual site, which did eventually happen, then we might have been able to, uh, or FaZe might have been able to win that round. Attackers it's the fact that they ran out of manpower in server that really did them in. Red Devil's going to completely forgo open area and tellers instead choose to go to CEO for their final defense here. Yeah, that could have been a, that could have been a phase round, I feel, again, just a little bit of patience. This is all was required on the th on the Thatcher side of things. Yeah. Once again, Astro almost walking in and being able to s to save that round single-handedly through that late flank as it was well called. But Phase at the moment seemingly struggling to find their footing, especially Cameraman and Yuna, both of whom have yet to find their contributions on the scoreboard. For Yuna, that's not the end of the world because his job is not necessarily to be able to rack up kills. 
For Cameraman, that certainly is. Cameraman does tend to play more of a fragging operation style deal, and well, look at that. He's going to be on Ash this time. Maybe hoping to kickstart something. Yeah. Because if you're not getting kills on defense, you're not going to do any better than you're doing on attack right now. So, I'm brute waiting to put down his mirror windows. This is great patience. I mean, FaZe has been bringing Twitch every single one of these rounds, but hey, look at that, no Twitch. So, his caution is unwarranted in this case, but it's good to have it um, rather than not. And uh, those mirror windows in meeting hall are oh so influential on this bomb site. So, good job to have Rue waiting. Overall, the setup from Red Devils is pretty standard. Looks like they're gonna be all anchors in this round. No roaming downstairs right this minute, but there's potential for that later, as the drop downs are still an option for rotation. Phase setting themselves up to seemingly attack from the main lobby, but they've also pushed their way into stock. It's gonna be Cameraman in a great position here, uh, and these lines of sight that were opened up by the defenders to counter Cameraman's push are now actually going to, I think, give Cameraman a little bit more flexibility and in terms of information. He's under siege right now inside of that stock room as the hatch will blow underneath him, and. The rest of phase transitions over to the CEO side wall, and we'll grab one of those two panels and bring his position to grab the other. No impact tricking available as Velvet is off, getting kills onto his own, taking out the Doka B of Astro. Yeah. And not really much destruction or disruption, rather, that was caused by the Doka B on FaZe's side of things there. On top of that, Astro is the top fragger for FaZe right now, really putting in a whole lot of work and not having it was going to hurt. Having Mav on the more fragging-oriented role, though, is obviously going to pay dividends, and they'll hope that Cameraman is able to catch fire here as he's downstairs looking to reposition. Mav, inside of this main lobby, looking to try to find the lesion, but it will be Cameraman picking up kill number one on good coordination, as you saw Mav on drone there, being able to give that information to the Ash in elevator below. Only one minute left and Mute Jammers will slow the advance of phase for the time being, but they are knocking on the gates at the moment. And the second panel in the CEO will go off from phase, making it easier for them to be able to push it. A little bit of overconfidence there from Velvet is why Red Devils is in a tricky spot right now. They would be still in a five versus four if he had not rotated to the main lobby. A little bit too much stack in the main or in the meeting hall here for Red Devils. Going to force the rotation from Vitz. That's a poor decision as it turns out. Is Cameraman able to get his second kill of the match? And that's going to put his team in a great position to take their second round. VNX and Abru are going to be the linchpins of this defense for Red Devils. And you can see Mighty actually able to get one onto Yuna, playing elsewhere. Abru debating whether he wants to drop or not. And he will. He's committed. This is dangerous. With only 15 seconds, he has to get a very efficient flank off as a three armor. Cameraman will get his third kill in this round and a fourth for camera. He's absolutely on fire. The diffuser being planted in Abru going to miss some really crucial shots. He could have just single handedly won the round, but in a one versus two, he will lose out to Moringa. Four for camera, one for Moringa, and FaZe take the round. Cameraman had got the ace, I was gonna throw the headset across the room and just walk out. Yeah, so <laughs> Parker Parker is really upset that I keep getting the aces and the 4Ks and yeah. That's okay. You'll you'll be fine, Parker. Finally some life in phase there as that's an incredible performance by Cameraman and also aided by the rest of his team. So this is why we say that having kills and not having kills doesn't really matter. Obviously it's worth pointing out when through almost half of the match, or at least what we suspect is going to be half of the match, somebody doesn't have a single contribution on the scoreboard. Typically, that's worth saying. You should be able to get at least one, two, maybe. It really depends. And now that we're switching sides on the defense, I would imagine that we will probably see every member of FaZe be able to pick up kills here with more reliability because there will be a lot more flexibility on how they play this defense. From being by with that said, Cameraman assisted in a number of ways that just simply cannot be tracked by stats on that leaderboard. And the four kills that he gets helps the rest of his team. But keep in mind, how close that round was, and without Cameraman's ability or somebody there to fill the role that Cameraman did, that round probably goes in Red Devil's favor, just showing how good Red Devil's has Attackers been so far through this match. Bomb. Yeah, Cameraman was always in the right place at the right time in that last round, too. I think it's important to know is his position, based on what his team needed from him, was why he was able to get those kills. Always where he needed to be. Now, it could be anyone put in that position to get those kills. And that's part of why Cameron didn't have kills leading up to that. He was playing the roles that well, aren't meant to get fracks. That's just kind of sometimes how it ends up being. Whoa, is that a? Yep, it sure is. I mean, shotgun on the Jaeger, the M870. M870 is a really good shotgun, all things considered, within, you know, five meters. 
It's not no uh, M59 OA1, but it's a really good shotgun. Um, and I think for holding server, it makes a lot of sense. Also, Red Devils does not bring a shield. So that's going to be a pretty pretty big factor here for anybody <laughs> holding on to server. I think that's called a utility dump right now. Three ADSs and a mute jammer with Astro playing that corner. That's how you do it, man. That is how it's done. Usually we'd see one or two ADSs. Three? I mean, there's no... That's so much. Obviously, FaZe can't possibly know this, but there's no Thatcher, and usually you're not going to six-pick into a Thatcher, so it's pretty safe to assume. I mean, you could six-pick into a Twitch. Yeah. Or you, possibly... Yeah, maybe. Or, but there's almost no way the Twitch gets all four of those devices, especially with the mute yeah. camera there that the Twitch probably can't see. No, he's going to get one, and then the... Astro will get the, the shot off. If it makes it past the Mute Jammer, which right now, from my understanding, there's no way you can play that corner, especially with the oh, barbed yeah. wire there, to be able to take care of that Mute Jammer. So it's the Thatcher or not, but uh, not is the uh, choice that Red Devils have made here, unwittingly. Astro going to be playing very close to this doorway. You saw the Jackal tracks, but he's not afraid of that. What he is afraid of is that Thermite charge that just opened up the drop down, which is going to force his support to fall back and put Astro in a tricky spot, but he's decided to commit fully. Dangerous decision, but with so little time left, it could be the right one. Astro's fascination with playing the top of server stairs might net him a very important pick or two. Because that mute jammer is there, there haven't really been a lot of opportunities for Red Devils to be able to open that up. We're gonna just see VNX try and take out the Pulse down below, who was playing in the open by the A-bomb. And that's going to be up to the Maverick to try and find somebody. Mighty drops through the hatch and he sees Astro and there goes that gambit. So all of that utility will be for naught, all because Red Devils bypasses it and pushes through the server. Mm -hmm. This will be FaZe relying on Mav to be able to call all of these plays as the pulse inside of gold will wait. Here's the biggest problem for FaZe is all that information that they have available to them from those well-placed Valkyrie cameras and evil eyes from cameraman as well will also be available to Red Devils as the Dokubi of Vitz will grab Astro's phone and be able to hack into the system. One of those evil eye cams and Valkyrie cameras will both go and 20 seconds left will herald the start of this push. The very first defense and a big C4 from Yuna will take out Abru as the phone call comes out and Logic Bombs trying to keep everybody from FaZe in place. Another C4 from Mav will go out and it'll be three for three. No, Yuna will take matters into his own hands and a big round from the Valkyrie will give FaZe their first defense. And maybe, Michael, this well-balanced map will just trend towards the defense, given the fact that Hibana and Ying are off play, out of action, as FaZe tries to close this gap, still giving Red Devils a lead in 4-3. to three. Parker, it feels like everything has been trending towards the defense lately. Not just, I don't think it's a map-based thing. I think it just happens to be where our meta is shifting. I mean, we've seen rounds and matches that are decisively attacker-sided. It does still happen, but I don't know. I, it, it, yeah, it feels like defense is definitely a favored side, period these days. We're going to be going upstairs. So we'll see how that plays out for FaZe. Still no Teller's defense from either team. We see the Doka B6 picked off of? Interesting. And there it is. There's the Thatcher. Okay, so you, as I said you don't typically th six pick the Thatcher, but clearly they did not want to, or they don't want to deal with anything like what they just had to deal with at the top of server stairs. Um, not guaranteed that that will be the case here as they're attacking CEO, however. I feel as though the IQ certainly could be a better pick here. I mean, talk about Valkyrie, how influential Valkyrie has been throughout the day. Not banned a single one of these matches and played pretty much by everyone for all three. You gotta bring an IQ to counter. Yeah. Especially on bank, man. This is. But you did get the Thatcher that you said. Yeah, which, yeah. Which is important. So you still have but, you still have that gadget disablement, that gadget go. denial, etc. But I mean, CEO is so much less linear than uh, Five than the basement. Thatcher's right. definitely going to help you with opening up the skylight wall if that's Attacker your plan. But I, 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 I mean, why not both? Two. On top of that, you could definitely bring both. I mean, you don't have to have an Ash. You could bring uh, you could bring an IQ. You still have the soft destruction from the Sophia. Or you could you could bring an IQ instead of a Sophia. I mean, whatever the case be, you have that option always available to you. And Valkyrie has been doing so much for both teams. There's also no Dokubi. Dokubi was pretty influential in taking out the cameras in the last round for Red Devils. As much as that didn't actually end up getting a win, it still was very useful. Good riddance. <laughs> All right. 
stock defense, on janitorial defense rather, as you're able to cover that stock wall that's been opened up. You can see the long line through the soft walls will allow somebody playing to look that way from the conference table. You've also got the Mute, the Valkyrie, and the Mira all beside one another with an arm's length in that janitor closet. Last time we saw Red Devils defend the top floor, we, they had a problem with everybody being too close together. FaZe are seemingly making that same mistake and leaving themselves exposed to potentially overcrowding. I mean, that's what forced Red Devils to rotate and what allowed for uh, FaZe to get so many picks the last time they attacked the site. Moringa, an aggressive peek onto the Thermite, will take him down, but not before Abru was able to open up the wall. Mighty does get the refrag, uh, but it's, on, uh, it's, it's a little bit too late. The C4 could have possibly been used to take out that exothermic charge, not really there, but at least with that heart breacher, as you mentioned, of Abra going down, that you're gonna have one of those panels that will stay upright. It also means that there won't be a secondary push over towards the conference room, or not even inside of stock or janitor, if you've been able to open up janitor, rather. So, obviously your second exothermic charge would typically go on that CEO panel next to the wall. It'll be safe for the remainder of this round. If it's just pushing his way in here to the top of Skylight. Astro is in a huge position if he's able to get any kills here, but he's gonna relocate after Mav gets taken down. It's unfortunate for FaZe that Mav was eliminated there. He could play a little bit more passive and allowed Astro to continue playing the hallway, because now the hallway is the attacker's domain. The only thing to stop a push there is these mirror windows. Maybe even Astro, yeah, with that ACOG, if he can rotate out there, but he does appear to be quite well established, and he'll get down, pick himself back up before getting down again. Cameraman taking out Vitz, and then we'll throw out a C4 onto the Diffuser, knowing that Red Devils were trying to refuse it, is an excellent double play there from the Mira, putting us at a 2v2. It's the final 30 seconds of the round, as Red Devils looking to try to continue to extend their lead, but Mighty's advance gets picked oh. up, and oh, a great flick on the Cameraman, traded off by Yuna, putting that all to the great use, and 47 bullets still left in that magazine is plenty to be able to deal with the Diffuse going down. VNX's position is he'll get tased away, all that life being chipped off, but it does not deteter him as he's able to get the plant down successfully and will now transition outwards. Mark's going in and oh, Yuna gets it! It only takes 40 bullets or so! And no opportunity to withstand as he finally reloads, but he's able to grab that diffuser in the post plant for Red Devils, not as successful as they'd hoped. The information from FaZe there to be able to give them all the calls needed to take out Red Devils and position Yuna in a good spot to retake. We'll be tied up here on, yes, what is indeed shaping up to be just a really big defensive contest between these teams. We head into round 9-4-4. So, for the first time, it will be Teller's Archives. And it'll come at the hands of FaZe. That last round was certainly a Red Devils round, in my opinion. Uh, Cameraman's the true hero to uh, bring it back in his team's favor. It was slipping away one inch at a uh, at time. Moringa did his best there to deny the Thermite, but in the end was unsuccessful. Despite that, though, FaZe was able to win it back on frags alone. So impressively done. Attackers need to the Red Devils came within bomb. inches of winning that round. I have to say the Zofia at the end there, a little disappointed because it was, I believe, one or two bullets that would have killed the... Uh, Ma the maestro, so I I'm really surprised that uh, he missed every single shot when confronted. All that said and done, though, FaZe will go to that middle floor defense. Do keep in mind, though, that the, the maestro had all the information. Yeah. Not only able to soften up the Zofia, but also had the had the info at his hand with good calls from the team. And of course, Maestro's gun is indisputably the GOAT. Oh, it's the best on defense, yeah. Yeah. Especially against Sophia, who had the ability to withstand there, so... It's actually, if you consider, I think it would be good on attack, too. I mean, overall, it's one of the best guns in the game, I'd say. It's up there. Yeah. I mean, I'd still probably take an F2 or the R4C on attack. Oh, me, couple me of too. Operators, but I mean... Yeah. Three, three speeds... First of all, there's only two, there's only two three armors on attack, right? You've got Fuse and you've got Blitz. Or no. Fuse, Fuse and Montane, sorry, not Blitz. Blitz is a two-speed. Yeah. What are you furring your brow at? Hmm? What are you furring your brow at? No, nothing in particular. You're not going to just. Could you imagine a three speed with that, with the Elda? That would be ridiculous. Yeah, that would be insane. So, I mean, you're obviously likely going to have it on either the. Because Fuse is an LMG, right? It's the same that Fink has uses, and actually some people. There's have an it. unreinforced wall yes. from archives into open area. This is really peculiar the way that this has been set up by FaZe Clan. It leaves them very exposed to exactly what Velvet is doing right this minute. Moringa is there, just positioned and waiting. Obviously, running the shotgun SMG loadout of a mute, which is 
what you anticipate now from a lot of players, given the way that Mute's changes come in. It's amazing how much just adding the SMG-11 to his repertoire has boosted Mute's yeah. play rate overall. Yeah, it was definitely a, a pretty heavy uh, buff for the Mute. And it's the uh, because the M59-081 is just as good of a shotgun as any other, um, you've got the perfect combination there. Mav is set up above with Astro to uh, play the vertical game. The reason they've left that wall unreinforced is clear. They want to bait people into pushing it. And uh, it's going to have to be a top four clear before anything else, but uh, Thermite Charge placed low enough. Astro's impacts were unable to trick it. And uh, because of that, the wall will be opened up into CEO. But CEO is not the site. The cameraman, all the while, is able to get the kill onto Mighty. Vitz will get an easy kill on the Mav, who is trying his best to throw the round. And uh, that's going to keep things nice and even. I think Mav was probably trying to go for a vault there, maybe even a C4, to stop Red Devils. But you're right, it got completely caught out. I mean, we've been seeing a lot of unnecessary aggression today, it feels like. I wonder if FaZe is thinking that maybe it'll be able to overrun Red Devils because they worry about his coordination. But I mean, or worry about their coordination. But the real problem has been that Red Devils have been, I think, in much better shape than people thought. There was also a kill that went out from Red Devils. On to Yuna, the Mira will be placed away, and Vitz will open up that soft wall, as you'd mentioned here. So this gamble that was taken by FaZe is not necessarily working out. With that wall inside of the back of Archives has been opened up. Interesting position here from camera, but it will net a kill. Velvet goes down, not paying attention to his flank. Likely that camera came up from the basement. Astro also going to take out BNX in a second for Astro. Beautiful play upstairs, leaving just Vitz in a bad position. 1v3, no diffuser in hand, and only 24 seconds. Gonna have to be a miracle if he wants to win this. And no, sir, says Moringa. Faze take four rounds in a row, five rounds total. Really, really actually impressed with the way that FaZe was able to recover there after things did appear to go sideways. And it will be yeah. FaZe's first lead of this entire match. Or map. They're interchangeable at this point. They are, yeah, technically. Cause, cause you could say either. Ones, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, they, FaZe have definitely bounced back pretty heavily, which is great to see from FaZe. A little bit surprising, though. I mean, the first three rounds weren't just Red Devils playing well. It was FaZe playing really poorly. Yes. And that has since faded away. Face is definitely back on top. Now, Locker's defense for FaZe next round for the potential match point. In that last round, I think a big problem for Red Devils was that they were they were trying to push from too many different places. I mean, uh, especially that Twitch who was pushing in through open area Attack towards uh, small office. They can. I mean, he was doing that alone. No support. And he ultimately accomplished nothing with it. So definitely something that I think, I believe it was Velvet. I think something that I think uh, Red Devils could cheer up. There was also the push into CEO was flanked because nobody was paying attention to the Skylight Stairs after they took out Mav. They all started pushing into CEO and losing control. There, There's a really odd amount of um, flanks that are just being opened up by Red Devils after they gain initial control, which is weird. 10 seconds remaining. This match has played out very interestingly with the way that we've seen Five Red Devils do things. Um, Got a Cav. I, I think, I mean, the Cav, the cav is not that surprising on bank, on the bank map, especially if you think that Red Devils isn't going to be running a Jackal, which you don't see, obviously. Probably one of your best bets. They also have the Dokubi as a tool to try and find the Cav. I mean, you have the quieter drone in Velvet as well that can possibly yeah. stay not too far off of the Cav. We were seeing a lot of Jackal earlier in the match, but... From FaZe's side of things. FaZe, yeah. But... Right. There, but not Red Devils, clearly. But footprints being invisible obviously would have been useful against a, a Jackal if it were in play. Yeah. So what is why Cav is one of the best roamers for uh, basement defense here on Bank. Jackal's still common here. Jackal's just common on big maps, right? Especially on Jackal. There's yeah. soft destruction. He's got the shotgun available to him. Well. Are they gonna roam? There's a Jackal. Yeah. Okay. Well, we know they're gonna do something crazy on Bank. Oh, there's a Jackal. Mm-hmm. You know. So. Astro doing that crazy thing here, but no Jackal. So Red Devils are going to have to compensate for it with uh, droning, which is actually going to be perfect for them because, yeah, Jackal would not be amazingly useful against this operator, but the Dokubi will potentially. Mighty might have heard that. I don't know if he did, though, because he doesn't appear to be heading that way, and Astro actually in great position uh -oh. to grab a kill. Oh, he sees the Dokubi, but he's about to run out of silent step. There you go with the Invisigun. And he'll finish him off instead as he hears the drop onto the buck. He'll get finished off by VNX inside of Lobby, knowing that there were two bodies of Red Devils there. So the opportunity for an interrogation there is going to be squandered as Astro, I think, makes the right call by securing the kill and then yeah. getting the heck out of there. 
certainly agree with you there, Parker. And uh, Dokubi, definitely one of the uh, better operators to take out. That's the smoke's gone for Red Devils. On top of that, one of those phone calls will not be available. Also, no hack cams. So Mav in this position down below underneath the hatch, which is where he's made his home until he retreats into gold, which is where he just went to. So you'd imagine that Mav's retreat to gold will once again have him quarterback, as I say, the defense. And really that's what he is more than anything, being able to gain useful information and ensuring that there's no drone play at the back. Worth noting that because it was the Dokubi that went down first, there will be no opportunity to take the cams nor the evil eyes of the defenders, meaning that this information will be very closely guarded. Also, the drop downs will be less accessible because the Thermite decided to Thermite the server drop. This is a stick from the Thermite. Yuna not aware of it, it seems, but he should be able to get it regardless. Oh no! The skeleton key from Mighty will deny the C4. A beautiful play from Red Devils committing to the defuse plant, and they will have it. Four versus four, and they've got good coverage in this post. A really hard site to retake post plant. Excellent angle from Mighty. He's going to do a little bit of damage there, but he's already done his job with the skeleton key. That's a cleanup for Red Devils. Absolutely beautiful. Did you see that, Parker? The skeleton key taking the C4 down. That's just, you don't see that, man. Mav is known for his utility, but man, it's hard to really stress how good that gun is, Maverick. Yeah, Maverick Maverick's, is... Maverick's both of his guns. That mm -hmm. AR hits like a truck. Yeah. And the M4 is just such an efficient gun, coupled with the fact that he's a three speed. He's got a lot of tools at his disposal. So we've got a 5 5 situation, all because. Mighty is really good at using a skeleton key. That was also predetermined. That was like a setup thing. You could see him waiting for the opportunity to use it. Oh man, you love to see it. What a what a really innovative counter. Usually you rely on those C4s getting shot if you're lucky, but it's not uh, something you can strategize around. This is a bit of a risk though. If it hadn't worked out, we would be sitting here talking about were they relying on a skeleton key. Anyway, Defenders CEO office, the next site here hours. to defend four phase. They're not gonna try and stick the basement this time around. I think that's the right call. Agreed. We're going to match point, so you're gonna guarantee one of these teams one point. Next thing in. It's yeah. gonna be a, this is gonna be a very pivotal round. If it's Red Devils, I I don't know if we if we see Red Devils winning this round, I don't know how well FaZe comes back. Whoa, I, think I, that, mean, I think that ultimately you end up in a position where uh, I think Red Devils might actually be able to carry this all the way with that momentum gleaned from that round. I am seeing a draw here, Parker. I am. I'm seeing a draw. I mean, we're talking about uh, Bank. FaZe has been looking really good. They're on defense. They have the advantage in that sense. Or at least we believe they have the advantage. It feels as though they have the advantage. FaZe are still in the driver's seat to me. And if Red Devils are able to win a, a round, I feel like that would be a little bit of luck on their part. That last round was still technically luck. I mean, they were relying on a skeleton key to hit a C4. Come on, man. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I, it could still go either way. We could see two rounds in a row from both, either team, but I am seeing a draw. Interesting and bold prediction. Mm. So, we saw an attempted spawn peek there from Astro trying to break this wide open. Red Devils will be using a shield, which is going to be a similar strategy to what we saw at a FaZe Clan. Trotting that Montane in towards the site, I will imagine that the escort on the Montane will come through the main lobby. Now the Montane will be a very useful tool here for Red Devils, something they haven't been bringing. Uh, for most of this match. They also have the glass, so they're doubling up on that smoke. And both members of Red Devils that we just mentioned, the glass and the Montane, will enter over from the balcony, or the terrace rather as it's called, will be caught on the default cam immediately taken out by the glass, which will deprive that information from the rest of FaZe Clan. Attackers no Valkyrie on the board this time around, so the only information, true information gathering, that will be done from FaZe outside of those default cams will be on the evil eyes in the mirror windows. But I will imagine here that with the buck from below, Red Devils will work very fast on these two panels in the CEO to open them up. Yuna doesn't have any impact grenades, so there will be no tricking that will be available, and Debru will have no issues grabbing one of those two walls, which will prompt FaZe to get out of there and retreat deep into the site over towards the executive side of things and leave CEO to the attackers, which will be perfect opportunity for the Montane to push in unabated outside of maybe a lesion mine or two. C4 will take a chunk of Vite's health away, but the Montane will still continue to exist. And the smoke cover from Velvet will allow him to see completely through. We'll see a second C4 that will go out. It will down the Montane, and in the process, Velvet will use one. Oh, but he gets torn apart what? through the smoke, and Yuna will finish off Vitz. 
Expecting a possible push here will be VNX to do covering fire, and Cameraman Feld the Mighty as this will go off the rails very fast for Red Devils. Phase in a fantastic position thanks to what happened there on that storage door. And Astro's gonna take down, uh, take down Abru as he comes up to push onto that downed individual. It's just two versus three here. Second for Mighty though, as he's got all the kills for his team in this round. Velvet's still on the floor. And he's looking to get picked up, and he will be picked up. That's huge for Red Devils. The aggression has abated on FaZe Clan's side. They realize they just need to wait these 30 seconds out. The pre-fire from Astro not going to land onto that buck. Mighty's still able to get that ace. If he goes for it, it's potential. Astro is going to be continuing to challenge the breach, though. Not landing any of his shots and will be fully blind. He's got unit back behind him to support, but the grenade is actually going to miss. Mighty is shut down eventually and only five seconds left. Astro able to get two there to lock things out and Yuna with the final kill. FaZe Clan take it and put themselves on match point. This is great for FaZe. Obviously you walk away with a point which you need after dropping three of them yesterday against Liquid. And for Red Devils, this is a big confidence boost as well. Even if RDS doesn't end up winning this matchup, you've been able to hang now with two pretty good teams. And this is a great leap forward for the team. Keep in mind that Red Devils came in from Challenger League. So this is the team that has the least experience out of all of the rosters here. They eliminated Ints yesterday and are now, we're looking to do the same thing to FaZe. Red Devils incapable of winning. But ultimately, that fast push was felled by great plays from FaZe. The two pushes out of conference room and the play inside of Janitorial that took down the Montane and then the cover onto Abru as well as the Thermite attempted to get his teammate back after the reset onto the glass. If that reset had worked, that round likely would have gone in a totally different manner. But still, a read that was correct from FaZe, done with limited intel, keep that in mind. As I had said, there was no Pulse, there was no Valkyrie, two tools that were being used quite reliably by FaZe. And as we head into the very final round of this matchup, the longest of the day, we look for possibly another draw that might emerge. It's gonna be FaZe going back downstairs. All things considered also, FaZe got a little bit lucky on that Montaigne. I mean, it was the Legion Trap and two C4s that managed to down him. And that's a uh, good utility stack. That's a lot of utility. Yeah. Well, Red Devils not making the best use out of the Montaigne the first time they brought it. They will be bringing it a second time, this time attacking onto the bottom floor. It will be a useful tool here. They still have the two, two hard destructors in play. That's Thermite and Maverick, so they're going to be able to open up all the same drop downs that they were able to open up last time. The difference here, I imagine, is that FaZe is probably not going to fall victim to a Skeleton Key shooting a C4 this time around. Um, so, it's possible, in fact probable, at this point, that FaZe will be able to take this win. Just because I don't see Red Devils having an appropriate counter for the stack of utility that FaZe is going to bring out. And they're kind of pigeonholed too. Uh, because they brought the Montaigne and Glass, they they kind of need to attack from a server. I mean, you have other options, I suppose, but nah, I wouldn't say they're, they're going to be as efficient as a server attack with this current lineup. So, two minutes left, Michael, here, and this Red Devils experiment with the Montane was not quite as successful in that first round. Now, there are teams that might just throw a Montane in just to see if it works and maybe bring it out for the rounds that they need as an experiment. It's something that I think people have kind of pointed the finger at Penta for over in EU with the fact that Hungry will go on Montane in a lot of rounds, but they won't support him the same way. It's very different to the way that FaZe Clan plays with the Montane, and I'll be interested to see what they're able to do this time around with the Montane on Red Devils' side because he was taken out, I think, a little too early on to really see what they were intending inside of Janitor in the previous attack. Once again, the server drop down going to be opened by Red Devils, and that's going to force the face clan roamers to fall back to sight off of server. Not terribly surprising, but uh, yeah, standard fare. It also does limit, again, those drop downs being opened up for Red Devils. Four possible, or three possible C4s rather on FaZe's side of things is they'll forego the Mira pick, putting Yuna on the Valkyrie, and I think that's uh -oh. the right call. But Red Devils knocking on the door at the moment. They are not too far away. I think they spot ADS they will need to take out in order to get the smokes down for the Montane. It'll be important that FaZe Clan has a response. Yuna lying prone will be able to toss a C4 at any real given moment, and oh, a comical sail as Abru flies back into the back of server stacks and another body will get tagged in. The evil eye still being in play here is absolutely huge for FaZe. There's nothing in the way uh, from Red Devils to counter it. 
and there's another C4 on the board as well. So these are good utility usage, or this is good utility usage from FaZe. You see Plant going down, there goes a C4, it'll grab Mighty, so excellent job. It'll now be up to Velvet to be able to take this down, but Astro on a flank will take one, and FaZe in commanding position with VNX trying to drop, but Super Astro putting up three impressive kills, and despite the fact that they barely led this matchup, FaZe will come in big when need be. And they grabbed the three points that were so desperate and elusive up until this point over the last couple play days. FaZe are back. So no draw here. FaZe managed to win it out. And it did look like that was going to be the case after the actual operator selection finished up at that last round. I mean, all things considered, Red Devils didn't have enough soft destruction. They couldn't deal with the evil eye. They tried to compensate by using Buck's grenades, but it was a rotation of the Buck from a different role, and it also ended up disjointing the attack. It took away an important role. I believe he was on flank watch. Apart from that, you know, it's hard to arc that nade properly. There was an ADS. It did catch the nade. Unfortunate that uh, for Red Devils and Red Devils fans that they were unable to pull off that attack successfully.